I, 28 female, never thought I'd be writing one of these posts, but here I am. The events of the past week have left me reeling and I'm honestly not sure how to process everything that's happened. It all started with my sister's wedding rehearsal and now I find myself caught in a whirlwind of family drama, legal threats and unexpected twists. I'll do my best to recount the events as they unfold, but please bear with me if I ramble a bit. Let me start by saying that I never imagined my sister would turn into the person she is today. Growing up, Olivia, 30, female, and I were inseparable. The kind of siblings who finished each other's sentences and shared everything. But as we got older, the differences between us became more pronounced. She always had a taste for the finer things in life. While I was more laid back, content with the simple things. Our parents weren't exactly rich, but they always tried to give us what we needed. My sister, however, always seemed to want more. Things took a turn for the worse when I met my husband, Mike, 29 male, five years ago. Mike comes from a working class background, and while we're comfortable, we're certainly not wealthy. But it was never a matter of concern for us, because slowly but smoothly, our life was on the right track. On the other hand, Olivia has always been obsessed with status and appearances. Chasing the money, she became friends with the wealthy kids in her college days and cultivated a circle of affluent friends. God knows how she maintained that lifestyle because she had on and off jobs and mom and dad could have only helped so much. From the moment Mike and I got together, Olivia made it clear that she disapproved. We had a small wedding ceremony, not only because of the astronomically high expenses, but also because we only wanted our close friends and families with us on our special day. Olivia was not happy about that. I remember her judging every aspect of my wedding, my dress, the venue, the people and whatnot. If this wasn't enough, she would also make snide comments about his job as a software developer, criticize our modest apartment and generally treat him with disdain. Despite this, Mike and I have built a happy life together. I hated how she mocked him. And that's why I rarely invited or visited her. This one time, she and I went on a double date with our parents and she did not like the fact that her boyfriend, Richard, admired Mike's work. She kept making sarcastic remarks about Mike's company and bragged about how rich her boyfriend was. It was difficult to let that slide, but my husband taught me to mostly ignore Olivia's attitude. Also, for Richard's sake now, who was genuinely a nice guy. Anyway, getting back to the story, when Olivia got engaged to Richard, 35 male, a year ago, I was so happy to hear the news. I was also very pleased to receive an invitation to be a bridesmaid. I thought perhaps this was a chance for us to mend our relationship. Even after our disagreements and different life choices, we were sisters and I believe nothing could have separated us. How wrong I was. As the wedding day drew closer, I couldn't shake a nagging feeling that something was off. Being her bridesmaid, I offered Olivia any help she needed with the wedding, but she brushed it off saying she had all of her friends in the city to help. It gradually dawned on me that she might be embarrassed by me and didn't want me around her rich friends. I decided to step back, figuring I would just attend the events and not intrude. Knowing Olivia, we knew that the wedding was set to be an extravagant affair with no expense spared. But I figured that was just her way. She deserved to have the wedding of her dreams and I was excited to be a part of it. The rehearsal dinner was held at an upscale restaurant and that's where everything started to unravel. So the day of the wedding rehearsal arrived and my husband and I made our way to the venue. It was a stunning location with beautiful gardens and a grand ballroom. Everything was perfect. As soon as we arrived, I noticed the way my sister was looking at us. It wasn't the warm, excited look I'd expected, but rather a 
cold, calculating gaze. I congratulated her and told her that I was very happy for her. But Olivia's only answer was a curt, sure. I brushed it off, thinking she was just stressed out from all the wedding planning. The rehearsal was going pretty smoothly. We were all mingling before dinner until out of nowhere, my sister gasped dramatically and started frantically searching her purse. Everyone stopped and stared as she declared that her engagement ring was missing. Everyone started looking around, trying to help. Concerned, I offered to check under the tables, thinking maybe it had fallen. That's when Olivia's eyes locked onto me and she looked at me with a look of pure accusation and said, Did you take it? Before I could say anything, Olivia fired off another accusation claiming that I had always been jealous of her and must have pawned her ring to pay off my debts or something. The guests started whispering among themselves and I could feel their judgmental eyes on me. I was stunned. Why would I steal my sister's ring? The only reason I was even there after the way she had treated me in the past few years was because I loved her and would never try to take her happiness away. I tried my best to explain my side, but it was to no avail. Olivia wasn't listening. She started ranting about how she had seen me eyeing her jewellery earlier, how I had been suspiciously close to her purse. The accusations kept coming, each one more outlandish than the last. My parents were trying to calm my sister down. My husband was just as bewildered as I was, and we both kept trying to explain that this was all a misunderstanding. But my sister was relentless. She kept insisting that I had taken the ring, even though there was no evidence to support her claim. Mike stepped in, trying to defend me, but that only seemed to fuel Olivia's anger. She turned on him, accusing him of being my accomplice. We had to be the ones responsible for this, she argued, because we had nothing compared to her. The absurdity of the situation was beyond belief. This was the woman who used to confide in me about her deepest fears, who would stay up late talking to me about her dreams. Now, she was accusing me of something so vile, so completely out of character, that I barely recognized her. The entire room was now in a state of chaos. Guests were exchanging uneasy glances, murmuring among themselves. Some of them had probably been on the receiving end of Olivia's sharp tongue before, but I don't think anyone expected this. The groom, Richard, was standing off to the side, looking increasingly uncomfortable. His family seemed utterly shocked, unsure of what to make of the situation. The whole scene felt surreal, like something out of a bad movie. Just as I thought things couldn't get any worse, Olivia's maid of honor, Melissa, chimed in and said that she saw me hanging around Olivia's things earlier. She apparently thought that it didn't matter then. I couldn't believe what was happening. I tried to defend myself to explain that I had only been near Olivia's things when I was helping her with her makeup, but it was like shouting into a void. No one seemed to be listening to reason. I continued to insist on my innocence, trying to maintain my composure, but the more I defended myself, the more convinced Olivia seemed to become that I was guilty. It was as if she had already made up her mind and, and nothing I could say would change it. My parents, clearly distressed, kept glancing between us trying to figure out what to do. They had always tried to be neutral, but I could see the doubt in their eyes. Was it possible they believed her? The thought made my heart sink. The situation escalated quickly. Olivia, seething with anger and desperation, demanded that I empty my pockets and purse in front of everyone. She insisted that if I had nothing to hide, I would comply. When I refused, stating that I shouldn't have to prove my innocence, she took my refusal as further proof of my guilt, turning to the crowd with a triumphant look as if my resistance had proved that she was right. She called for security to search me and Mike. 
That's when Richard finally spoke up and told Olivia that this had gone too far. He told the security guards to wait outside and told Olivia that it was completely idiotic to accuse her own family. He told the security guards to wait outside and told Olivia that it was completely idiotic to accuse her own family of something so heinous. He said that maybe we should all calm down and think about this rationally. But she was beyond reason at this point. She rounded on Richard, accusing him of taking my side over hers. The look on his face was one of dawning realization as if he was seeing a side of his fiance that he had never witnessed before. Amid the chaos, I noticed something glinting on the floor near one of the tables. I bent down to pick it up and lo and behold, it was the missing ring. I asked Olivia if this was her ring and instead of apologizing and being grateful, like a normal human being, she did something that proved that she had completely lost her mind. The room fell silent. All eyes turned to the ring in my hand, then to Olivia. For a moment, she looked genuinely surprised and then to my utter disbelief, she grabbed the ring and said that she knew I had it and to quote her exactly. I was probably about to plant it to make myself look innocent and that we should check the camera footage. I was at a loss for words. How could she twist this situation even further? That too, when I had just picked up the ring in front of everybody in that room. But before I could respond, Richard stepped forward. And let's just say he did not mince his words. He called out Olivia's behavior and said that this matter wasn't that complicated to begin with. But now when everything was solved, she was still trying to make it worse. All of her false accusations and comments had finally got to me and I decided that this wasn't over. My husband and I had been embarrassed in front of my loved ones and were accused of something we didn't do. So I propose that for everybody's satisfaction, let's check the CCTV footage. That will make everything clear, right? I knew that this wasn't fair to Richard, but I didn't want to be known as someone who might have sabotaged his sister's wedding for the rest of my life. That's when I saw it. Olivia's face went pale. She knew that I hadn't taken her ring and now her plan was falling apart. Suddenly, she agreed with her fiancé and said that, we were making a fuss over nothing and she didn't care what happened to the ring. The only thing that matters is that she has it now. But this was far from over. She was not getting away with this. With the help of several venue staff, we got the footage in no time. And what we found out was definitely a punch in the gut for me. In the recording, we could see that as soon as Mike and I entered the venue, Olivia and her maid of honor, Melissa, started talking. Minutes after that, Olivia dropped her ring on the floor and shoved it under one of the tables. She then went to the other corner of the venue and pretended to look for the ring in her purse and a minute later began the whole drama. By the time we reached the end of the footage, Richard was shocked and Olivia was hiding in the other corner of the room. She tried to explain to Richard that it wasn't how it seemed and that she was sorry, but Richard was visibly angry. Olivia looked around the room, seeming to realize for the first time how many people had witnessed her behavior. Richard announced that it was best that they called it a night and apologized for everything that had taken place. He then turned to Mike and me and asked if he could walk us out. After all the things we have seen, we were more than done. As we left the venue, I could hear Olivia's protest behind us, but Richard didn't look back. Once outside, he apologized again, saying that he had no idea she would do something like this. Richard said that he might have to reevaluate a lot of things after this. Mike and I went home in a daze trying to process what had just happened. The next morning, we received a flurry of messages from family members. Some were apologetic, having realized the truth of the situation. Others, particularly Olivia's friends, continued to accuse us of somehow orchestrating the whole thing to embarrass her. But the biggest shock came when we got a call from Richard. He informed us that he had called off the wedding. 
He said that after everything that he had seen last night, he could not imagine spending his life with a woman who would sabotage her own family like this. I felt a mix of emotions. Relief that the truth had come out. Sadness for the pain that this would cause our family. And a wave of lingering anger at Olivia for putting us through this ordeal. Now, here's where I need your input. Olivia has been blowing up my phone, alternating between tearful apologies and angry accusations. Clearly, she does not feel genuine remorse and is just apologizing to manipulate us even more. But what is even more outrageous is that she's demanding that I pay for the cancelled wedding venue, caterers and all the other stuff, claiming that it's my fault for making a scene at the rehearsal dinner. She's even threatening to take us to court if we don't comply. I'm at a loss. Part of me wants to cut all ties with her after this, but another part feels guilty about the wedding being called off, even though I know it wasn't really my fault. Mike thinks we should just ignore her threats, but I'm worried about the potential legal implications. So, Reddit, AITA for refusing to pay for my sister's cancelled wedding after she falsely accused me of theft? Update 1. First of all, I want to thank everyone for their supportive comments and advice. It's been incredibly helpful to have an outside perspective on this situation. A lot has happened in the past few days and I wanted to give you all an update. Olivia's tactics have gone from sleazy to malicious now. Shortly after my original post, we received a formal letter from a lawyer representing Olivia. The letter demanding that we pay for all the wedding expenses, citing emotional distress and reputational damage as the reasons. Mike and I were stunned. We couldn't believe she was actually going through with this. On the advice of many commenters, as well as friends, we decided to consult with a lawyer of our own. We found a local attorney who specialized in uh, family law, and she was incredibly helpful. After reviewing the situation, she assured us that Olivia's case had no legal merit. She explained that we couldn't be held responsible for the consequences of Olivia's actions, especially since there were numerous witnesses to what really happened. Our lawyer also advised us to gather statements from people who were present at the rehearsal dinner, just in case. We reached out to Richard, who was more than willing to provide a detailed account of what he saw. I also took this opportunity to apologize to him for everything that happened at his wedding rehearsal. He shared that he's been doing a lot of thinking and he's grateful that he saw Olivia's true colors before they got married and he wouldn't have to spend the rest of his life with a liar. He even offered to help with our legal fees if it came to that, which was incredibly kind of him. Several other guests also came forward with their versions of events, all of which supported our story. Armed with this information, our lawyers sent a response to Olivia's legal team, basically telling them that if they pursued this ridiculous claim, we would counter sue for defamation. We haven't heard back from them since, which our lawyer says is a good sign. On the family front, things are still tense. Our parents are caught in the middle, trying to mediate between us. They've urged me to forgive Olivia, saying that she was just stressed about the wedding. While I understand their position, I'm not ready to sweep this under the rug. It's not like Olivia's asking for my forgiveness. She's asking for my money. Tons of money, actually. Mike has been my rock through all of this, reminding me that I don't owe Olivia anything after how she treated us. As for Olivia, she has kept herself busy doing one or the other thing, which is either radio silence or sending passive aggressive messages to the entire family. She's told anyone who will listen that I ruined her life, but thankfully most people seem to see through her dramatics. Some of my relatives also informed me that after the incident, many of Olivia's friends ghosted her. That means all of her wealth sources are basically drying up. If she carries on like this, she's very close to becoming homeless. I'm still processing everything, but I'm feeling more confident in our position. We're standing our ground and refusing to be manipulated or bullied. If she comes our way with another shenanigan, 
we will find a way to counter it. I'll update again if anything significant happens. Thank you all again for your support and advice. It's made a world of difference knowing that I'm not crazy for standing up for myself. Till next time, update two. Hello again, everyone. I'm back with another update. And I have to say things have taken an unexpected turn. I had naively thought that worse was behind me after Olivia's wedding was called off. I believe that the family drama would die down, that Olivia would retreat into her own world and that I could go back to my life with Mike. But the days that followed revealed that I had been entirely mistaken. The situation was far from over and the true depths of Olivia's vindictiveness were only beginning to surface. Two days ago, I received a call from my parents. They sounded worried and asked if Mike and I would come over for a family meeting. I was apprehensive, fearing that they were going to try to pressure us into giving in to Olivia's demands. However, what actually happened left me speechless. When we met, my mother looked more haggard than I'd ever seen her. She didn't mince words, launching immediately into what was on her mind. Olivia had been in constant contact with her, spiraling further into anger and desperation with each passing day. My mother revealed that Olivia was no longer just angry. She was plotting. Olivia was determined to make me pay for what she saw as the ruin of her life. She was convinced that I was the reason her wedding was cancelled, that my presence at the rehearsal had somehow cursed her plans. And now, in her twisted logic, as we already know, she believed that I owed her something. It was shocking to hear my mother speak this way about Olivia. Growing up, she had always been the one to defend her, to brush off her tantrums as harmless or chalk up her behavior to stress. But this time, there was no hiding the truth. Olivia's bitterness had reached a dangerous level and she was dragging everyone around her into the pit. My mother explained that Olivia had begun compiling a list of grievances against me, everything from the most recent accusations of stealing her ring to long-held grudges that didn't even know she had against me. It was as if Olivia had taken every minor disagreement, every moment of sibling rivalry, and blown it up into a grand narrative of betrayal. The most alarming rumor, though, was that in the past few years, she constantly lent me money so that I could pay off my debts. According to Olivia, I had been envious of her success for years, and now... I was supposedly reveling in her downfall. All of this made me think there was something seriously wrong with Olivia because normal, stable people don't behave like this. I assured mom that I had never taken a penny from Olivia in my life. And about the legal challenge, I told her that I had a lawyer of my own and we had proof of our own to counter her stuff. If she accuses us of something, I also had the trump card of defamation to sue her because, unlike her case, I actually had reason to do so. It was sad that my mother was caught in the middle, torn between her two daughters and clearly terrified of what Olivia might do next. As if the family pressure wasn't enough, I soon found myself bombarded with messages from other relatives some reached out to express their support, but others, unfortunately, sided with Olivia. They believed her story, convinced that I had somehow orchestrated the events that led to the wedding being called off. The phone calls, texts, and social media messages were relentless. Some relatives accused me of being jealous and of wanting to undermine Olivia's happiness because I was unhappy with my own life. Others simply parroted Olivia's words, telling me that I should do the right thing and pay her back for the wedding. It was as if I had been cast as the villain in Olivia's elaborate tale, and no amount of reasoning or explanation on my part could change their minds. Mike and I have decided to take some time to process everything. We've agreed to keep communication with Olivia minimal for now, but we're open to the idea of slowly rebuilding our relationship if she shows consistent change. 
This whole experience has been a roller coaster, and I'm still trying to come to terms with everything that's happened. Despite all the chaos, life has to go on, but I'm grateful for the support I've received, both from many of you and from those close to us who stood by us through this ordeal. I'll let you guys know if something significant happens. Thank you all again for your advice and support throughout this crazy situation. Update three. Hello, everyone. After the chaos of the last week, I assumed Olivia's silence meant that she was finally backing off, but deep down, I knew better. My sister was not one to let things go quietly. The longer the silence stretched, the more certain I became that Olivia was up to something. It was only a matter of time before she would re-emerge, and I was sure it wouldn't be pleasant. During this uneasy calm, Mike and Richard had kept in touch. Their conversations were mostly about the fallout from the cancelled wedding, but there was an underlying tension in their exchanges as if they were waiting for the other shoe to drop. It wasn't until Richard reached out to us with an urgent request to meet that I realised Olivia had not become this devious in a day or two. Richard had heard bits and pieces of the drama Olivia had caused and wanted to share something important with us. Richard's expression was a mixture of exhaustion and resolve and I could tell he had something heavy weighing on his mind. As we settled into our seats, Richard began to recount the details of his relationship with Olivia. It was clear from the start that she had always been fixated on appearances and her obsession with wealth and status had driven much of her behaviour. Richard confessed that Olivia had spent a staggering amount of his money during their time together. Lavish shopping sprees, expensive dinners, trips to exotic locations, nothing had been off limits for her. But the most shocking revelation was that Olivia had gone so far as to purchase a villa in Malibu, all with Richard's money. Richard explained that when he confronted Olivia about the extravagant spending, she had skillfully manipulated him, using emotional blackmail to deflect any criticism. She would accuse him of not trusting her, of doubting her love for him, and eventually Richard had given in. He had allowed her to continue spending because he genuinely cared for her and didn't want to lose her. But looking back, he could see how she had used his love as a weapon to get what she wanted. Her hate for Mike and me wasn't just a sudden sprout. In fact, many times when Richard would question her expenses, she would pin it on me because I was poor and needed her help. One incident that particularly stood out to Richard was when he made an offhand comment about how much he admired the relationship Mike and I had. He hadn't meant anything by it, just a simple compliment on the way he supported each other. But Olivia had taken it as a personal slight. She had gone silent for the rest of the day, punishing Richard with her cold shoulder, and he realised now that her jealousy and insecurity had been festering for a long time. The reason Richard wanted to meet us was that he knew Olivia might still try to drag me into a legal battle over the cancelled wedding. But now, armed with the knowledge of her financial discrepancies and her manipulative behaviour, Richard was prepared to fight back. He offered to provide us with proof of her spending, including records of the villa purchase and other transactions that would clearly show how she had squandered his money. Richard was determined to make sure Olivia didn't succeed in her latest scheme and was willing to help us in any way he could. I was both grateful and saddened by Richard's offer. It was clear that he had been deeply hurt by Olivia's actions. And while I appreciated his willingness to stand by us, I wished it hadn't come to this. I reassured him that we hoped it wouldn't come to a legal battle, but I appreciated his support and would keep him updated. That evening, after returning home, I decided it was time to confront Olivia directly and make it clear that I knew everything and she should just stop. Now, I know some of you might think I am stupid for showing Olivia all my cards, but let me tell you, Olivia 
was all talk, no show. She was a scaredy cat, and that's why she hadn't taken any serious steps till now, because the idea of an actual case was enough to get her all panicky. So I drafted an email laying out everything I knew. I wrote about how I was aware of her extravagant spending, the villa in Malibu, and how she had manipulated Richard into funding her lifestyle. I made it clear that if she wanted to take this to court, we were ready to face her armed with the evidence Richard had provided. Also, both of us knew that she had no basis for all the things that she had been claiming that I had done. And if there was even a tiny bit of human decency left in her, she would let this go and go back to her life. I hit send, feeling a mix of anxiety and relief. There was no turning back now. I have no regrets about this. I had done my part as a decent human being and now the ball was in Olivia's court. Let's see what happens next. Till then, ciao people. Update four. Hi guys, I think this will be my last update since everything has almost gotten wrapped up by now. Very soon after I sent the email to Olivia, I received a call from my father. He told me that Olivia had returned home in tears begging for their help. She had finally realized that her actions had left her isolated and vulnerable. None of her friends were around to help her anymore, even her maid of honor, Melissa, who, if you remember, conspired with Olivia at the wedding rehearsal. According to my father, she had started reaching out to the guests who had attended the wedding, apologizing for her behavior and the accusations she had made against me. It was as if she was trying to undo the damage she had caused though it was clear that it was too little too late. In the days that followed, Olivia's apologies spread further. She called me, leaving voicemails, texts and emails full of regret and sorrow, begging for forgiveness. While it was clear that she was trying to make amends, I couldn't help but wonder how genuine her regret was. Was she truly sorry for what she had done? Or was this just another act to avoid facing the consequences? Dad told me that she had also started to look for a job, and to be honest, that restored a tiny bit of hope in me for her because it showed character. As for Mike and me, we've decided to maintain some distance from her for the time being. We've made it clear that while we're open to rebuilding our relationship in the future, it will take time and consistent effort on her part. This experience has brought Mike and me even closer together. If anything, this ordeal has reinforced our appreciation for our life together, modest as it may be in Olivia's eyes. As for the legal side of things, we received a formal letter from Olivia's lawyer confirming that all claims have been dropped. Our own lawyer reviewed it and assured us that we're in the clear. It's a relief to have that weight off our shoulders. Looking back, I'm still amazed at how quickly Everything unraveled and then came back together. While the experience was painful, I think it was necessary. It brought long-standing issues to the surface and forced us all to confront some uncomfortable truths. Thank you all once again for your support, advice and kind words throughout this journey. While I hope to never have to post about family drama again, I'm grateful for the community I found here. Wishing you all the best. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.